Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Heat Wave. 32 teams in 32 days. We are breaking down every single fantasy relevant player on each team for the upcoming season. And today we will be focusing on the New York Giants. I am your host, the fantasy plug and editor in chief of the fantasy football by Brodo app and fantasy uh, brotofantasy.com, Tim Petropolis. I am joined by Matt Ward, the dynasty Don himself and the fantasy encyclopedia. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a special guest. <laughs> the most special of the guests for the first time on the heat wave. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the true, true value king, the director of operations of BrotoFantasy.com and the Fantasy Football by Broto app, Jason. Yeah. <sighs> it's good to be here, guys. It's good to oh, be here. It's good oh, to have you. It, you know what? You know what it's good to have? It's good to have you, Jason, but you know what? It's really good to have the Fantasy Football by Broto app. On your phone, download the Fantasy Football by Broto app for free and get everything you need to dominate fantasy football and become your own expert. Every single stat you hear us use today can be found on the app where you're going to find Fantasy Player Cards, which is a very compact Fantasy Player profile that tells you everything you need to know. Fantasy Player Grades, exclusively to Broto Fantasy. Start Sit Tool. Who to draft tool, player comps, podcasts, consistency charts, game logs, coaching tendencies, articles, rankings, waivers. And the best part of the app, I'm saving for the absolute last. Every stat you need, all the stats, they're all there, including exclusive stats only for Brodo, true throw value, true target value, true performance value, adjusted air yards, and of course, my favorite tool in the world, true matchup rankings. And the app is free right now because of our patrons over at patreon.com slash Brodo Fantasy. Thank you so much, patrons. You literally keep this going. You pay for everything, and we love it. Your money goes to the app. It supports us. It keeps us going. But also, we're, you're not just giving us money. We're giving you so much extra if you become a patron. For as little as $3 a month, you get an extra show every week, access to Brodo Leagues. And I got to tell you, if your league sucks because there's a lot of home leagues that suck, this one will not suck. It'll become your favorite league. We have so many people who make le leagues like together in outside leagues. They play in so many leagues together. It's the greatest community of all time. Proven DFS catch game op optimizers by Cass. Access to cheat sheets, private team consultations, uh, a unique fantasy league that we're introducing soon for only the patrons, and access to the greatest community in the, in the world, not just the fantasy world, the Brodo community on Discord. If you enjoy the show, if you enjoy the app, please consider joining. Your contributions go a long, long way. Today, we are jumping into the Giants, and this one is a brand new team, but with a lot of the same pieces, because Brian Dayball who's one of my favorite coaches in the league over the past few years, former Alabama offensive coordinator under Nick Saban, recently the offensive coordinator of the Bills, has had offense and QB success no matter where he is, no matter where he goes. And the new offensive coordinator, he's a former QB himself. He's been the QB coach for the last four seasons in Cincinnati. He's been the pass game coordinator for the last two seasons. Mike Kafka. If that name rings a bell, it's because he was a quarterback in the NFL. Last year, they were 31st in points per game. Obviously, not great. New coaching staff, so new tendencies, but same quarterback, same, basically same everything, except PFF offensive line, their offensive line got better. According to PFF, they're 18th. Bills passed at the highest rate last season. The reason I'm giving you the Bills is because Brian Dayball called the plays. Obviously, the additions, QB, Tara Taylor, uh, right guard, Mac, Matt, bleh, Mark Glassenau. There you go. Running back, Matt Breida. Tight end, Ricky Seals-Jones. And tight end, Jordan Atkins. They also drafted rookie Evan Neal in the first. Wandale Robinson, a receiver in the second. And da Daniel Bellin Bellringer, excuse me, Bellinger, excuse me. I don't know what I'm doing today. Uh, in the fourth, they got rid of some of these you might call addition by subtraction. Evan Ingram, Kyle Rudolph, Devontae Booker, John Ross, and Dante Pettis. In fact, the Giants roster last year was so bad that there are currently 24 people, 24 people, 24, who the Giants had on their roster last year and who they do not have their on their roster anymore that are not on a football team right now. 24 people. That's half the freaking team is a free agent right now that no one wants. And like Dante Pettis got signed. All right. So like he's one of the guys that got signed. So worse than Dante Pettis guys. All right. And uh, the guy, the those guys were on the team last year with the quarterback, Daniel Jones, F grade for fantasy. Uh, if you look at the back of the Broto card, it's not pretty. So let's jump right in because you've heard me talk enough. Jason. Daniel Jones, how are we feeling about him this year? Is there any reason to think that there could be some progress forward? 
Look, man, I went into this thinking, oh, Daniel Jones, fuck that guy. How many times people are going to act like Daniel Jones is someone you should roster? And then I dove into the numbers. I looked at his ADP, and I'm in love with Daniel Jones as a quarterback, too. Disgusting. There's no reason oh, why okay. he should be okay, the quarterback okay, okay. My bad. My, as right, a quarterback, right. too. All right. But there's no reason why he should be the quarterback 24 off the board, guys. He was dreadful in 2020. He was 31st in points per game for quarterbacks. But the two other years, last year he was 16th. In 2019, he was 15th. So two out of three seasons, he's been a middle-of-the-pack QB2. And if you look at what he did last year, too, he was consistently average. And that's what you need from a QB2. He had one game as a QB3 or worse. One. And his weapons aren't that much different than last year. They have Kadarius Tony, who can make shit happen with the ball in his hands. Wondell Robinson can make shit happen with the ball in his hands. The rookie who basically is Kadarius Tony. And then they also have Saquon Barkley, who's going to be another year healthy this year. So all you need is Brian Dayball to do work a little bit of magic. And the guy who's been quarterback 16 or better two out of the last three seasons can do just that again and possibly improve. You know, the Giants team, they went from a very respectable franchise to losing a lot of that respect in the past few years for the terrible decisions they made personnel wise in terms of who's running the team. And now that they have, Brian Dable on board. They have the new GM on board. They made smart draft picks. They are solidifying the offensive line. Uh, you know, they're building sort of the correct way. I think that the Giants are on the upswing, but not enough for me to bank on Daniel Jones at all. Um, but, you know, I think the big guy in this lineup is Saquon Barkley. I mean, the last time we saw Saquon Barkley as a fantasy relevant running back, 90% of the country had no idea what the word pandemic even meant. They're probably like, what is that? A Marvel villain? Like pandemic is coming, is, is attacked. Someone, someone call Spider-Man. Pandemic is coming. Like they have no idea what that. So that, that's how long ago that was. Uh, the, it's in a different world. Like Saquon Barkley being good is in a whole different universe at the moment. And, but the O-line has been upgraded. Like I said, they drafted Neil. Um, a lot of improvement from Andrew Thomas last, last year, the left tackle. That was great to see because they spent the, High pick on Andrew Thomas. They they skipped over uh, guys like Makai Becton and um, Jer uh, Wilkes from the from the uh, the Buccaneers. Uh, so it's good to see him improving. Will Hernandez out. He's been a problem for a while. Uh, Glowinski in. So it's really it's a. Do you think Saquon can stay healthy? Is the question, and that's going to be the question. So Matt, how are we feeling about Saquon this year? Feel really good about Saquon. <laughs> that, that's that's where I want to start. Yeah, I feel great. I think people forget how good that kid actually is, and and what it means to kind of like have a high ceiling as a running back in fantasy. He's an incredible rusher that earns an insane amount of targets. Like e even last season when he only played twelve games, he had fifty seven targets, uh, was top ten in target share. So if you play in any sort of format, whether it's half or full PPR, that like gives a premium to pass catching backs i think saquon's an excellent value still i think as one of the highest ceilings of any running back in 2022 because that offense isn't much different than it was last year and we like we'll get to them but like those were promising their their potential that that's what i see in them i, I don't see somebody that you're going to be able to guarantee a 25 plus percent target share in an offense that is going to need to throw a lot because their defense added you know Kayvon Thibodeau some excellent pieces, but I don't think it's the, it's the secondary where their issue is going to be. So they're going to have to play from behind a lot. And I think Saquon is the obvious benefactor as a receiver in this offense. Still, I, I do kind of think that the biggest like question to his ceiling that anybody, you know, people might have reverences towards drafting Saquon, but I think the biggest question is being overlooked. And that's like Brian Dayball's offenses have never really supported an RB one either. If you look at all of the Bills years back, and, and yeah, Singletary got hot towards the end of last year, but like all of those years that he was the leader of the Bills offense, they've never really utilized the running back in that format. But with the Giants, I think it's more of a product of the pieces that he has than the system that he's previously run. He's not going to have any choice. Um, I think Saquon healthy is easy to see 70 targets, 75 receptions, um, and 1,000 rushing yards. And have the most touchdowns of any member of the offense, not named Daniel Jones, I guess, the guy feeding him the touchdowns. 
Yeah, I mean, and I think that this year in particular, too, with Saquon is the first year where you're actually getting his injury risk baked into his ADP. Because this is the first yeah. year that you're not get, have to you're not having to draft Saquon in the first round. You you can draft Saquon in in the second round, and all of a sudden, you know, he's your RB two rather than your RB three if you're going RB heavy, or he's your RB one, but you already have a solidified wide receiver, um, in your in your stable. You know what I mean? So his. I'm. I, this is the first time in a few years where I'm saying if you're taking Saquon Barkley, I'm not mad at you, but I'm also not targeting Saquon Barkley to be like I really need this guy because I don't like having I don't like my RB one or my you know someone I spend the second round pick on being that like un is unclear in terms of what's next because you have to take into consideration that yes Saquon's been great in the past but he's also had a fully healthy year where he wasn't amazing and saquon is hit or miss and when you have saquon barkley if you take away some of that speed if he goes from four four to four six right all of a sudden that's he that's a big difference in the nfl and for a guy like saquon who kind of leans on home run plays i think that that's something to consider when projecting him and drafting him where he's going, but I do like where he's going way better than I have in the past. Jason, what's your what's your thoughts on Saquon in general? Oh, my bad, Matt. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, I think that injury risk is the only reason that you should stay away. But I don't think that Saquon is necessarily injury prone. Like, it was a freak accident, like you know the high ankle sprain and like even in 13 games played, I, I know it wasn't like his best season, but that offense was absolutely dreadful. And in 2019, he only played 13 games and was RB seven in points per game with over a thousand yards and 52 catches. And in 2018 as a rookie, he was RB three with 24 points a game. So like, yeah, maybe Saquon is kind of on a career decline because smaller injuries have, have slowed that speed. Like you said, but I still like, yeah, absolutely still believe it. And I think now that you can get the discount finally baked in, I mean, it's going to be hard to find a running back in that tier with a higher ceiling than Saquon Barkley. Uh, Jason, how about you? What is, what's your feelings on Saquon? I, I, this, he's such an important pick, I think, that we have to we got to get all three opinions on this one. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, so there's too. no <laughs> doubt he has overall RB1 potential. Like, he's had that since he entered the league. My concern piggybacks off of Tim's concern. Where even when Saquon was his rookie year, uh, when he was just killing it, like he was a big play guy. And last year he was getting caught from behind. He wasn't ha breaking away and having 70 yard touchdown runs. So if he lost a step from his injuries and he's not able to be explosive, then he becomes a plotter on the Giants. Plotter's probably like, I'm a, he's not a plotter like fucking. Who, who's a bad plotter? He's not Evan Royster. He's more like a plotter. <laughs> mad, like, mad random. Like, <laughs> he's not, that, he's was more a, like a that was a great like, name drop. Mad <laughs> random. <laughs> Let's say Yo, like news Mary flash, Barber, right? In case, like you didn't, strong. in case you didn't know this, in Najee case you didn't Harris. know this, guys, in case you didn't know this, Saquon Barkley better than Evan Royster. Um, <laughs> look, I, I do want to, I do want to like share, uh, so I, I do want to share something, but I know this is usually like more of the weekly podcast. Heat waves are supposed to be a little uh, quicker, but fuck it, I'm, I'm going to go with it anyway. I, do you guys remember the old ESPN show Playmakers? Do you guys remember uh, that show by yes, any chance? Like, faintly. It's like it was a drama centered around an NFL locker room, and the yes. NFL made ESPN take it off because – uh, there was like the run, the starting running back was smoking crack in a locker room, and like, and, and like there was like people beating their wives, and, and it's like it was like a r ridiculous like drama. You know what I mean? There was one guy who had like one steroids and had CTE, like so the NFL was like, hey, shut this down, ESPN. But there was a scene in there, like one of the storylines was that there was an old running back, and there was this new running back that they drafted uh, early in the early in the draft who's on crack, but it's great. And the old running back is like, I need to prove that I'm still the starter. Let me run the 40 for you. And he runs the 40 and he ran a four, six. He's like, look, I haven't, I haven't slowed down that much. I ran a four, six, four, four, or four, four before. And now I'll run a four, six. And then the, the coach goes, all right, let's watch this. And it goes through tenths of a second. Right. And it shows like, this is you when you were young and it goes four, four. And you, he like, he like sidestepped the defender and he bounced right now. Let's slow that down. Point two, 
and you can see him like get caught by the defender. So uh, while it's not that while it's a, it was a drama, I remember thinking as a kid like that stuck with me as that's the difference. That's the little difference in in terms of the athleticism in the NFL of like being great and being mediocre. So it is a little it is a little concerning for Saquon, especially if you watch Playmakers. Duh. All right, wide receivers. Let's get into this because Kenny Galladay, man. Worst free agent wide receiver performance of all time is uh, is a question that's a valid question. Uh, did not score any touchdowns. Uh, can, he bounce back, can he bounce back from this? I think that there was a lot to overcome last year. Can he bounce back from this? Matt, take it away. I mean... Yeah, I, oh, you okay. can't get much worse. Yep, true. Right? right. Like, honestly, like, let's, so he's never had anywhere near that type of a low floor. And, and like, I've never been a big Galladay supporter or, you know, championer um, because he's never really had a high career target share. And he, he's never really been, you know, he's kind of been like a supposed alpha. Alpha, Alpha, Tony Alva, shout out. Um, but I suppose that Alpha, um, but has always had like well below all of the alphas in the NFL, all of their target shares and, and yards per route run and, and all of those things. So he was really just a, a big play guy on a team that was really bad in Detroit and had to throw the ball a lot. And yes, that is also the offense and the system that he's in right now, as we alluded with Saquon, but it's starting to kind of get like, there's a lot of mouths to feed and more so not from like a, a production standpoint. Like if, if they want to do really, really well, then I think their best bet is to look towards the future and their younger guys. And now you're at a point where with Kenny Galladay is like that contract is already wasted money. You wanted to see his best season last year when the contract first came in and it's only increasing, but now they have rookies to kind of supplement that. So while those rookies are on younger contracts, I think they're going to want to develop them as quickly as humanly possible, knowing that Galladay has lost money essentially. For Galladay alone at his current ADP, I think it's a fine investment in all honesty. Like he his, his points per game last year is already baked into his current cost. So at wide receiver 74, like, why not? That's how I feel. It's like, am I projecting Kenny Galladay to have a great season? Probably not, but also no, like, but I'm not protecting a... him to have a double like that yeah. season again. Like, I don't bro, think that that's going to happen. He's not Dante Pettis. Like he's right. not Evan Royster. <laughs> like wide receiver 74 is like, come on guys. Come on. Yeah. That's what I, I mean. So it's like at, at that point, it's like, why not? And I mean, you're, you are seeing like, even though, Tony was hurt and, and there's big questions about him. Um, and people are really excited about Juan Dale Robinson. Like I still think that in the grand scheme of things for that offense to function at all, Galladay is going to have to be a factor. And, um, it, so he would be the wide receiver that I'm targeting the most in redraft on this team, but none of these options are exciting. Like I like Juan Dale a lot. Before we get, in, hold before we get into that, I just want to, before you get into that, I just want to hit Galladay because Although I'm not projecting Galladay to have a big a big season, is it outside the realm of possibilities that he could? No, it's it's it definitely Brian Dayball's there. If Daniel Jones, like Jason said, has been good before, if he catches right now his ADP, if he goes 906, you're fucking through the roof. And there's a chance he goes 1408. There's a chance. Relax. Is it gonna happen? There's a world where he goes 1,408. He's not Stefan Diggs. There's but, a less than a 0% chance. Yes, yes. yes. But there's a more realistic world that he goes 906. And if you're and, you, and, and if you're like drafting him on, at, at ADP, number 74, 906 is like, oh, hell yeah. I'll hook that up all day for out of your wide receiver five. Probably trade him for something or have a great bye week replacement. In yeah. Holiday, so. And I mean, that's... Another kind of like strategy that we don't touch on much because we're trying to run through these players, but like with guys that any one of these guys that we've touched on in previous or in, in episodes to come that have ADPs like that, that are when ADPs are baked into their absolute lowest ceiling, it's like, why not take a shot? You know, that that's that's a good opportunity to flip and trade value like they don't even have or have to be on your roster, but like those are where you can capitalize on 
good draft choices is taking a guy's ADP. That is his value is already what his absolute lowest floor, lowest ceiling would be. Uh, so we talked about Kenny Galladay. He's the more exciting player of the but, but, hey, look. All right. So here's what For I'm 2022. Thinking. I think, I think he's still the one, right. um, but so, it's, but because I think they're going to develop those other wide receivers that we'll get to talk about is yeah, that brings down his overall output as well. So let's talk I about do think guys. he will lead the team. So let's talk about these guys. So because Sterling Shepard, uh, Kadarius Tony, I think Darius Slayton's still there. Wondell, Rob- Wondell Robinson you talked about. So like, I feel like the Giants are like a really good AAA All Star team at wide receiver. Like they, yeah. but they don't have they don't have any major leaguers. They don't have any home run hitters, but they got a bunch of like almost their guys. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Kenny Galladay is probably going to get work as an M one receiver. But then there's another role in this offense that has been consistently, consistently valuable, and and that role is slot receiver. And last year, Cole Beasley kind of got stepped on by Dawson Knox, but there is no Dawson Knox on this team. You, that, that one of the reasons why I'm comfortable talking this long about about these other positions because tight end is going to take about a minute. So like, what? So no one's taking that role away. So the slot receiver, whoever starts in that slot role, I think will be a viable wide receiver three ish play. You know, because they, they're going to get that Cole Beasley role. But the question is, who is it? I, I think for me, I'm banking on Sterling Shepard. I think that he's the the veteran of the bunch. He's had career success. But Kadarius Tony fits that bill. Uh, Wondell Robinson fits that bill. So how who are you betting on in this uh, in this AAA All Star team? I think it's I think, Tony. Uh, no, uh, yeah. I mean, I was. Gonna <laughs> say, I think the answer. I don't have an affirmative answer. I'll leave that to Matt. I have an affirmative an- answer of fuck Sterling Shepard. Like, he's not the answer. I disagree with you so much, Tim. Mm. Like, this guy has just been injured and playing bad for, like, 88 years now. And for some reason, the Giants <laughs> keep having him on their team. And now they have Kadarius Tony, who looked good last year. They have Wondell Robinson, a.k.a. Kadarius Tony 2.0. And both of those guys are made for slot, like, quick hitting, give me the ball, quick routes. So I'd be less surprised if Sterling Shepard was released by the end of the year, then if Whoa. Sterling Shepard was putting up wide receiver three numbers. Wow. Okay. Uh, hot, Honestly, Matt, how you feeling about that? I mean, I'm, I'm cr- I, I, there, that might've been, could have been saved for the bold take, but um, I do think Shepard will have a role as long as he's healthy, but he's coming off another season ending injury in, in um, 2021. So that's his like, problem. I'm not he's even, always, he's always been he's, good when on the field. Right now he's he's, he's on the him. the pup list. Um, so like we don't even know really if Shepard, whether they want him or not, will be ready to play in that offense. Um, but man, I really do like Kadarius Tony. Um, shout out to uh, one of our writers, Themi. He's got a pretty good piece on on Tony's kind of second year breakout coming up. Um, I think if Tony is healthy, he's going to be a big big part of that offense. Uh, I think they're going to utilize him in the role that. Juan Dale is also fit for, but in a much more effective manner. If you look at his like year one stats, he has a lot of really impressive stats that like hold stickiness to production from like a year one rookie wide receiver to a year two rookie wide receiver. And one of those things is yards per route run. And he was top 15 in yards per route run. Um, he was number one overall in like of tackles amongst wide receivers. And he only played. 10 games and like six of those games he was utilized and four of them he was just an afterthought um when the season began so like you said it earlier tony is really good with the ball in his hand and he had a top 10 target rate uh 28.9 percent so on literally a third of his targets essentially he was earning a reception um well i do think that the wide receiver two that you want on the giants is tony um Again, price. Like everybody, man, that's the problem is everybody on this offense is the Eli Manning rule. It's everything. It's like everybody on this, this offense is really cheap because their previous season of, of horrid production is baked into assumption. And it is a different offense. It is a Brian Dayball led. So I do think that you can invest in these guys safely, but to expect much more than like maybe a quick value return on the trade market or somebody you can fill into a flex spot is 
it's just not going to happen. There's not going to be enough scoring volume to go around. And it, although touchdowns are unpredictable, you need them to support high end fantasy producers. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the Giants in the bottom 10 of scoring offenses. Yeah, I agree. All right. So that's the wide receiver takes. Uh, I think, I, I don't know. Kadarius Tony, I saw something about him that just like screams. Because like, here's the thing, bust. man. Because maybe we should have just quickly done tight ends to begin because Ricky Seals Jones and Jordan Akins are not good. And even at, and Evan Ingram <laughs> over there in New York had one good season in his life. Like these aren't guys that are there to have real roles. So if someone's catching touchdowns, it's probably going to be someone playing a wide receiver position or Saquon Barkley. So someone has to catch those touchdowns. And if we're yeah. looking at whose body is built for touchdowns, I mean, honestly, Ricky Seals Jones and Jordan Aikens are the biggest guys, and they'll probably catch a few. But Kenny Galladay clearly has the biggest body of that squad. And if anyone could make someone miss to find the end zone, it's Kadarius Tony. So there is, I do think there's value to be had in these secondary options on the Giants. All right, guys, it's time for everyone's favorite segments, the bold prediction, something that not exactly will be the 100% truth, you know what I mean, but a little hyperbolic. If everything goes exactly the way that the good, the good way or the bad way, whichever way you want to go, however you're think, thinking, I'll start. Saquon Barkley, top six running back potential this year. I think if everything goes right, Saquon Barkley back into the superstar conversation and young enough where he can, you know, still hold that title. Uh, where you're going to want to draft him in the first round next year. So that's my uh, that's my double hot take. Uh, Saquon Barkley, top six and a first round pick next year. Jason, where are you thinking? Where are you where are you at? Uh, you know, I'll go with the double one as well. Kenny Galladay is going to have his Melvin Gordon season, meaning when Melvin Gordon scored zero touchdowns and then a shitload the next year. Mm. That's going to be Kenny Galladay this year. And on that note, Daniel Jones, I'll give an exact number. We'll finish as the quarterback 11 overall. That had to get wow. a come. That had to get a come on, son. Like I'm, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> nah, it's supposed to be bold, right? Nah, that that gets a come That's, on. Brian Dable, we I, trust because I, mean, I was I was going to do a bold one with Daniel Jones too. So on, I mean, if my bold oh, prediction shit. comes true, oh, then his might. Okay, what is it? Because I think. I think Daniel Jones might lead quarterbacks in rushing touchdowns this season. Okay. That that's more likely than Jason's. I like that. I like that. bro. If he <laughs> well, leads that would, that quarterbacks would in rushing touchdowns. One ceiling. Yeah, he'll be quarterback eleven. <laughs> you know what? You're right. He has like eight so rushing I'm, touchdowns this season, ten. I can't get on board with this, guys. The Daniel Jones love on this podcast is is ridiculous. I don't know. He's quarterback twenty four. <laughs> quarterback yeah, twenty four. That's what it, I mean. Again, the story of this whole heat wave is just that like every single one of these players are at their lowest possible value in a redraft. That's true. It is true. I, I will so their floor. Take, yeah, you know, take, take a, a shot. Giants. Yeah. Take a shot yeah. on giants. Why not? I think, yeah, that because uh, wrapping the- it up is like, we don't love the giants, but they're so cheap. <laughs> take a shot on them. I think if you, if you can wrap it up like that. Um, okay. That's all for us. What well, that was a fun one. Jason, I miss you dog. <laughs> it's good, good to be back, back baby. Uh, Jason, tell them where they can find you. Go first. Find me at Brodo FF Jason. Matt, literally anywhere. Oh, Matt. At Psychboard well, FF. Anywhere Matt, as well. Yeah. Matt, let's shuffle them up again. Let's shuffle up and deal. All right. Now we can see it. There you go. Psych I need to, FF before Tim Matt. signs himself Psych off, I need to make fun of him a little bit for the people. Um, the, the name of this video is Giants Real. Like real. Like TV. Like R E E L. Tim. No. No. Who no, spelled it real? R E A L. I don't know if you remember this. But um, this is the real Giants, the yes, real of the real. real Giants. Yes, because there's two videos in Giants because I had the intro and I fucked up the first. Oh, one. so this is the actual real. So video. this is You're Giants. Not to oh, real. real. Uh, like this is the real Giants. video. Now nah, that's dumb as fuck. <laughs> this is how this is how, stands. I, that was stupid. a little no, no, a little bit behind the scenes. Like if you're going to if you're going to go into a music uh, music, if you make music behind the ba- most engineers in hip hop. Uh, studios use the word real like that a lot for like the uh, actual thing. So a little bit behind of uh, the, the, the benefits of being the brother of a professional rapper. 
All right. With that being said, you can find me at Brodo FF Tim, at Brodo FF Michael. No, at Brodo FF Mike, excuse me, and at, at Brodo FF Casanova. Don't forget about them. Us three are going to come back to you tomorrow with some more NFC East action. Don't forget to catch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Brodo Fantasy if you want to see our faces. Again, you know, just being real, we're not really a video centric uh, company. We, a lot of our followers really like our app. They really like our website. They really like our podcast. Um, but if you want the video, go check it out. The best way to, the, the best way to vote for the, uh, for video format to stay is to uh, press play. All right. So with that being said, uh, yeah. See you tomorrow. Peace.